Hello, we're having a rare sunny day here in London, so I thought I would take advantage of it and film outside, and it feels very appropriate to add to the subject matter of this novel that I'm going to be discussing, um, which is very much about being out in the elements. Uh, but because I'm outside and still in London, uh, there may be planes going over and uh, m might be quite noisy, although there's also some lovely bird song going on, so um, that makes some nice background. But it's so striking. It's it, how certain books can be so atmospheric and vivid in their descriptions that you can almost have a bodily reaction to them. And I definitely had that when reading this book. I felt like, oh, I need to gather food together and I want to stay inside, like cozy and warm. Uh, and that book is The Vaster Wilds by Lauren Groff, which follows the journey of an unnamed uh, girl as she's fleeing into the snowy wilderness and seeking shelter and gradually starving. And we get her story um, slowly uh, about the, the tale of how she fled from a settlement in Virginia. It's set in the 17th century and uh, her reasons for doing so. And so we gradually get her backstory um, while she's uh, trying to make her way to somewhere safe and to try to sustain herself and live. And uh, it is it is so harrowing um, because uh, being out in the wilderness in the middle of winter time, it's a time of bleak survival. But also um, there's this wonderful sense that this is the very first time in her life that she has been fully independent. And so it's this process of self-discovery that she's going through while also just trying to live. And that made for me this story absolutely absorbing and moving and breathtaking. You can tell how chilly it is out here because you can actually see my breath. There's so many stunning descriptions of the natural world throughout this story. You feel the sensation of waking up in the morning to have a snow-covered landscape and the, the freezing temperature of a stream that she goes into to try to get some fish. Uh, and also the, the taste of pine tea in the morning and uh, each morsel of food and bit of reprieve she gets feels so precious and wonderful. Um, because of the harshness of her circumstances. But then you also feel the absolute terror of being in the middle of the night in the wilderness and not knowing what predators are lurking around. This is a season of desperate survival and you not only feel her plight, but also the plight of the animals uh, around her, of, of ducks and a squirrel. And the author doesn't shy away from bodily descriptions of what starvation and trying to live out in the wilderness does to this girl. Uh, and even though the conditions of living outside and, and trying to survive on your own are very harsh. Um, so are the, the conditions of growing up in uh, England at this time, as she did. Um, it describes how she survived through the plague and the horrific conditions of that, but also um, the ho horrible journey of traveling over on boat through a stormy ocean. And the description of this journey, I think, is one of uh, the most powerful scenes in the book. But also also how in the settlement uh, conditions were so bad and they were so deprived and starving uh, that they were resulting to cannibalism. Though the girl had one good romantic relationship which she clings to as a precious memory, uh, the novel also describes her perilous situation as a young woman um, living in this time period and how people would take advantage of her. And there's a really striking line which Groff seems to be using as a, as a touchstone um, for how this is uh, a plight that women have experienced like throughout the centuries and still continue to do. Um, so she says, uh, for what woman has not walking in the dark of the street or along a path deep in the countryside sensed the brutal imaginings of a man watching her from his hidden place and felt the same chills chasing over her skin and quickening her steps 
to get away. And I, I mean, this is something I've been very conscious of as a man of when I'm just like walking through London late at night and uh, a woman happens to be walking up um, ahead of me and I try to be careful not to be too, get too close to her because um, I, I don't want to like freak anyone out. So the story shows that life being cast out into the wilderness uh, may be very perilous, but so is living in a male-dominated society where danger lurks around every corner. And this is a girl who possesses a natural intelligence and determined manner, so it's also quite sobering to think about what her life might have been like if she had been born into a different time and place and had more advantages in her life. In interviews, Groff described how she wanted to write a female version of Robinson Crusoe, and I feel like she's really effective in paying tribute to Defoe's story because this is not only an adventurous tale of survival, but it's also a philosophical journey into a new understanding of oneself. Spending so much time on her own, she starts to develop her own language and way of understanding the world around her. And she writes, naming she understood made things more visible. And she also contemplates uh, possible new names for herself because she's been named many different things throughout her life, but none of these names have suited her and none of them have felt like a true expression of herself. So she's gradually, finally claiming an independent identity. And being so intensely alone, she starts to hear a voice in her head and starts conversing with it. And this voice might be a god or nature, or it might be an intense conversation with herself. But through this dialogue, it feels like she's shrugging off these societal notions which have been placed upon her growing up in a particular circumstances and under a certain religious order that she's developing this new understanding for the world around her as well as herself. Yet at the same time, there's the question of whether life is really worth living if you are totally on your own and not part of a community and with other people. Though the story is primarily centered on her perspective, the narrative occasionally shifts to show other points of view, uh, such as a Powhatan tribe uh, who live close by her and are who are silently observing her from a distance. And I feel like this broadens uh, the story out a bit more to show how history is filled with many different individuals who are living in perilous circumstances and some who survived and some who faltered. It's also effective how there are brief flashes of an authorial point of view to show the circumstances in which she's living in and what's happening uh, around her so that we can understand the context better, but which the girl can't know anything about. And it was so interesting listening to interviews with Groff, how she described that this novel is the second in a proposed thematic trilogy showing the uneasy progression of society across centuries from different women's points of view. Um, so I had read the, the first novel, Matrix, which I also thought was really interesting, but takes a very different uh, perspective and comes to different conclusions as it follows a woman um, thriving within a, a small community, but also facing a lot of challenges there. So I'm really intrigued to see where Groff takes this project next, but her writing is always so immersive and powerful that it's an absolute pleasure to read. And I'd really recommend reading this book um, sometime during the winter time if you've not read it already. But if you have read it, I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. Um, what did you think about this story and how she handled the, the structure of it? I've already had a really interesting discussions about this with my online book group, but there is so much more to say about this book. Uh, but I hope you're doing well and reading good things. I'm going to go inside now and have a nice warm cup of tea uh, while uh, still listening to the birds, but uh, I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.